consumption of 12 ounces of fruit juice can increase your risk of cancer 18 percent. Scientists say it's still okay to drink juice occasionally, but recommend it not be part of your everyday diet. And people in the UK will soon be able to get health advice by asking Alexa. Amazon announcing their Echo smart speakers will now be able to provide answers to medical questions. People in the UK are, are beginning. People in the UK, you guys are going to be able to get medical advice from Alexa. Oh, how special you guys are. Leaders in the workplace could be missing out on sleep. A new study by the Center for Creative Leadership found that... How? How? Interesting that is. Thank you for joining me, beautiful spirits. Alice Arena. What's up, buddy? How you been? How you doing, Allison? Hit the like button, beautiful. Got an interesting topic for my UK people. Boxing, actually boxing in general. Something jumped on me yesterday, looking at that fight. And I was wanting to get you guys an opinion. Just wanted your opinion. You already did a what? I'm gonna take it back. What? How are you, beautiful spirit? Should I say beautiful spirit? Allison, my bad. I, I don't understand exactly what you said, but what's up? Who's in the building? Is Nathan Gorman? Is Nathan Gorman on the trail of becoming a journeyman? Chan Boxer, what's up, brother? I'm asking a very important question. Hit the like button, please. Thank you, Allison. You hit it off rip. Is Nathan Gorman about to become a journeyman? It's 11.30 in the UK. What's up, y'all? In America. Are we seeing a journey, a journeyman in the making with Nathan Gorman? Allison, where you, where you live at again, Allison? Welcome. What's up, what's up, what's up? What's up, what's up, what's up? What's going down? Had a question about some boxing talk. We're going to get deep. We're going to get deep for about 30, 45 minutes. We're going to get deep for about 30 minutes. 23, 22, yeah, 1130, baby. I'm looking at the clock. I'm catch y'all before midnight. I'm gonna let y'all go. Talk to y'all till midnight. I'm gonna let y'all go. Is Nathan Gorman on the trail to becoming a journeyman champ boxer? CB. And I ask that question because. Doing oftentimes, we don't, um, oftentimes, 
you know, we wonder how guys get into the situation they're in when it comes to boxing. Oftentimes we want to know or we wonder how a boxer comes from becoming a contender to a journeyman. A champion contender or a prospect contender journeyman and the different paths they may take, the different losses perhaps in their career. You know, we, we all, oftentimes talk about like, God damn, that was a good fighter. If this door was open, that door was open. Oftentimes we agree that it, be, it depends on who's, um, who's behind you. Unfortunately, your, um, your physique, your look, a whole bunch of different things play. But we all know, or we can, um, a lot of us know, not we all, but a lot of us can recognize that oftentimes a true champion ain't born. They're created. Oftentimes, true champions or successful people in boxing or in the industry, any industry are not just born, they're created. So Nathan Gorman, a man who was 16 and 0 going to the fight against Daniel Dubois, Daniel Dubois was 11 and 0. Nathan Gorman had 11 knockouts. 16 and 0, 11 knockouts. Now 16 and 1. Is Daniel Gorman going to become, say, the Derek Chisora for the next 10, 15 years? I ask y'all guys that. How are journeymen created? And is Daniel Dubois, was this win, was to put Daniel Dubois on the fast track to be pushed as definitely a championship contender? You know? Because when I saw Daniel Dubois come to the ring last night, the package or the format used for him appear to be a lot like Mike Tyson. He ain't coming with no road. Just a little sleeveless top, black shorts, black shoes, no socks. Who does that remind you of? Or who started that trend? Mike Tyson. Why is the title killing me? PC Jacob, what's up, brother? Why is the title killing? I, it's just a question. I'm not, the question was not trying to um, clown Nathan Gorman. The question is, are we seeing the makings of a journeyman or a gatekeeper or things like that? Like, we actually saw Let's use Adrian Broner for an example. Adrian Broner champion. It's on a fast track. For the tough, tough contender that was stepping up. He was stepping up in the weight class for the tough contender. Took that loss. He wasn't going to be the next Floyd. So... Now we look at Floyd, we look a lot of people look at Adrian Brown as like he's about to be the gatekeeper. Somebody you want to just name you want to get on your resume. Is that what we're seeing? In the early makings, early beginnings, about to be what Nathan Gorman will become. And it's been many, many, many fighters, of course. I start off with great, 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 great. Seemed like upside to their career early on. And then it got pitchforked. It came into the fork. It was like in the industry, 
or the business either geared them that way, that way, or that way. For whatever reason they did. He could too, Blue Sky. He could. You know, but when they become journeymen, it starts early. They already gave him a base. Right, he's a contender. He's not actually a champion yet. Not the one we really, really got the top belts. He's a contender. He's a championship contender. But does he have a belt yet? You know? And what is Dylan White's record? What is the Body Snatchers record? And the thing is, I don't I wouldn't put Dylan White quite in that category because Dylan White lost to a champion. Nathan Gorman lost to a prospect in Daniel Dubois. That is the difference. That is the difference. That's why I wouldn't put Dylan White situation with Nathan Gorman. Thank you, Christian. What's up, Christian Baco in the house? Christina Baco. What's up? Oh, and Blue Sky, what's up? Gorman might become the new Kevin Johnson, PC Jacob said. You know? And I just asked the question because it, it dawned on me today. And I was like, you know, there's been so many fighters we were watching the beginning of their careers, right? And we like, that fight is going to be like, man, they're they going to turn out to be good. You know? And they're going to turn out to have a, they're going to be good. They're going to be a great career and all that. They're perhaps down the, on the streak to becoming a champion. But then something changes. The handlers, the shot callers, you know what I mean? Um, the money. Say no. No. Because all of us, hit the like button for me, y'all. Hit the like button. All of us um, looked into this fight. Also, the question... All of us before this fight, and I raised this question well, well before. I said, is this too early? And even they asked him that the guy who did the face-off between the two, where they was at the table, asked him the same question. Is this, this is very early for you two guys in his career. This is very, very risky. And Daniel DuBois said, we're under the same banner. You know what I mean? We got to do what we got to do. And um, this is what it is. Who should have had some tune-up fights? If apparently Frank wants Gorman to fight Joyce in December, is that a good idea if he gets two back-to-back -back losses? That's what I'm talking about, PC Jacobs. PC Jacobs, that's what I'm saying. Are we seeing the beginnings and makings of a journeyman, a gatekeeper, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? We, I, I point this out, and thank you. And uh, for champ, Christina Baco for saying good champ. Because, dude, I really want to talk about the things in boxing that, or well, I have in the past. I have in many videos when you go back months and all of that. I don't like to get caught up, even when myself get caught up in one, like, specific pattern of making a side of video, I smack myself out of it. So I'm like, hold on. No, 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 no. Diversity. Myra Magnus, Diversity, Boston Logics United. Talk about the things that you really want to talk about that the other channels don't even bring up. Are we seeing the makings of a journeyman? Because a lot of us have been watching Fallen Boxing for all of our lives. And we saw a little young prospects come up and we thought there was going to be this and that and it didn't fit the bill. Like Hector Camacho Jr. But of course, he stepped away from the sport totally because he can't have his name mess up the legacy of his father. And that would be embarrassing for him too, any son or whatever. So, you know, you have sometimes men who try to trailblaze their own pathway to greatness. You have 
their sons and kins who try to pick up where they left off, a lot of different situations. But um, is Nathan Gorman, are we seeing the makings of a journeyman, the makings of a gatekeeper? And I think one of the first things you got to give, we have to create for somebody you're going to create as a gatekeeper or a journeyman. Is that you gotta at least give them that first like within the first twenty fights has to be look something look very very good, like on paper. They create the paper. Um, they create the resume that looks good at the eyes on paper, and that's why when you hear commentators talk with like on paper this is a very good fight, but in reality we know it isn't a good fight. In reality we know. Or logic tell us, like, this guy gonna crush the other guy. That guy record look like, makes him look like, yeah, he's, he got the goods. He gonna make this a competitive fight. But in reality, and in logic, we know that that record just says that. That record says 35 wins, five losses, six losses, or 35 wins, 10 losses, 35 wins, 20 knockouts, 7 losses. That is a gatekeeper record. Unless you are Manny Pacquiao. Unless you are Roberto Duran. With, well, Roberto Duran got freaking like 89 wins though. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying... Yeah, he's a good boxer. But is he a champion? Many journeymen... Are good boxers. Dimitri White, what's up, bro? Many journeymen are good boxers. Joe Joyce is a journeyman too slow. I hear you. I hear you. He's going to become a journeyman. Yeah, it looked like he giving up. Or, you know, let's look at it like this. Don't you think promoters, don't we understand or realize promoters... All promoters, promoters have to create journeymen just as much as they create champions. Because the promoter, if he's building up a fighter, he has to have some fighters aside. If he's building up a prospect and want to get him on a championship scale to become a mega champion, he already have to have fighters in his stale, in his, I'm sorry, in his stable. To help build the young prospect that he won up. You know what I'm saying? How do we know that Gorman wasn't that for Daniel Dubois? And Frank Warren already had that idea in his mind. Is this a good... First of all, Max, thank you all for coming here. I appreciate you today. Hit the like button and tell me if you think this is a good topic. Julio over 100 matches. He'd be a great soaring partner. Vincent Garzon, I never see your name before. What's up, brother? Welcome. You think Marciano had a PR guy? No. What you mean, Christina Baco? Maybe a contender, lock dog. Who are you talking about? You think Gorman's going to be a contender? Ben Preston, I've never seen your name before. Welcome, sir. How you doing? Warren said, Ben Preston said, Warren wasn't happy about putting them into this fight this early. He said in a couple of interviews, it's a potential cash cow loss in the eyes, really. No. I think Warren said that, but did Warren mean that? Warren said that, but did he really mean that? Did, did Warren see Gorman as a potential cash cow? Or do he see Daniel Dubois as a potential cash cow? Let's ask the fact-finding questions. Let's ask the reality questions of what we see on the landscape of boxing. Who do Warren see? The, the, the question is, again, who do Warren see as the potential cash cow? 
Gorman or Dubois. And don't Warren needs somebody to build up a potential cash cow. If he saw Gorman as a potential cash cow and he saw Daniel Dubois as a potential cash cow, wouldn't you think Gorman, if he really seen both of them, if Frank Warren seen both Gorman and Daniel Dubois as potential cash cows, why would he risk the record of each one this early on? He must have only seen one as a potential cash cow. And he's seen one as becoming his journeyman and gatekeeper to build prospects up. This is thinking business. If he thought both of them were potential cash cows, he went out of fought both of them to, yes, last night. He went out of fought both of them. That don't make logical sense to me. Just like if you go to the PPC, If, let's say the PPC, Al Heyman, must see Earl Spitz Jr. as a potential cash cow, just as he sees Keith Thurman a potential cash cow. Because if he didn't see them, like we've all said, Al Heyman control who fights who. And if he saw both of them as potential cash cows, it's a reason why he ain't, maybe that's the reason why he ain't fought both of them yet. Right? Maybe Warren needed it that money. He didn't even sell out the O2 Arena, though. Y'all saw that fight like I saw it. That O2 Arena, it was a lot of empty seats. And maybe it backfired on Frank Warren. Could that be? Maybe he thought that fight would sell out. That fight needed more promotion. And those names, Dubois and Gorman, aren't big enough names yet. So, how much money did he need? Or, it didn't come close. Dude, that's the main thing I was looking at when I saw it. You know, we were seeing, looking at the ring like here. And this side, yeah. But the fucked up camera crew was showing it from the angle, and it was showing front facing this the other side. And that side, furthest away, it was a lot of empty fucking seats. I'm like, damn. They're supposed to, whoever's controlling the camera crew and all that, was supposed to at least catch the angles where it looked like the crowd was packed. They fucked up on that. And if I was Frank Warren, I'd be cussing some motherfuckers out. <laughs> Hit the like button, beautiful spirit. Good questions, though. Big C, what's up? Let me shout out everybody, man, because I appreciate you all coming in and let's talk some real good talk. Um, Alice Arena, beautiful. How you doing? Champ Box, a beautiful spirit. PC Jacob, beautiful spirit. Blue Sky, what's up? Beautiful spirit. Christina Bacco, what's up? Beautiful spirit. Um, Blue Sky again. Lock Dog, what's up? Beautiful spirit. Mr. Ben Preston, Preston welcome to Boxing Logics United. Formerly known as me, myself, just Myra Magnus. Welcome, sir. I appreciate you. Dimitri White, what's up, beautiful spirit? Vincent Garzon, what's up, champ? I hate Niker. I'm troller. I don't know what you meant by that, but hey, thank you. Scott Young, what's up? What's good, brother? Scott Young, I see you got that Detroit Lion in your joint, baby. That's what's up. Um, Big C, what's up? Arsenal Maniac, what's up? I knew Dubois was going to take care of business easily. One, Dubois, longer reach. Two, more powerful, strategically smarter. And they tried to sell Gorman as boxing technician, but Ricky Hatton isn't technical. <laughs> well, you got a point there. Tomasco Mark. Tomasso, what's up, baby? You know what? I'm in a live right now, and nobody in this bitch, besides, oh, we got Alice Arena. Yes, she got the wrench, but we don't got no, we don't got, Lace Hatcher, what's up? We don't got many knights in here tonight. We got no, a lot of knights at the Britarican. And for those who's new to the channel, I am also known as the Britarican. British, American, boxing, UK, American, all day, baby. The Britarican, that's my nickname. 
He's a hard character to sell, but his fights speak for itself. Who are you talking about? Dubois? His controversial character makes him difficult to imagine. His introverted character makes him difficult to imagine. That's all right. Tyson was introverted in the beginning. Tyson was a good speaker, but Tyson was introverted in the beginning. P.E.D. What's up, buddy? And also, his nickname is Dynamite. So, Daniel, Daniel Dynamite Dubois. Frank Warren is trying to package him as a British Tyson. Okay? So, this has always been there. He didn't expect Gorman to win that fight either. Frank Warren didn't. Frank Warren, see, he hate putting them together. He did not expect Gorman to win that fight. There's no way in hell. His name is Daniel Dynamite Dubois. Mike Tyson, what was one of Mike Tyson's nicknames besides Iron Mike? What was one of Mike Tyson's nicknames? Or should I say, what was his name changed to on Mike Tyson's punch out? Punch out? What was Mike Tyson's name changed to on Mike Tyson punch out when they, after they sued um, Mike Tyson punch out the video game, his name was changed to Kid Dynamite. One of Mike Tyson's nickname, a lot of people don't know, was Kid Dynamite. And now you got Daniel Dynamite Dubois. Black trunks, black shoes, look just like Tyson, no socks. Yeah, he's being packaged to be Mike Tyson. His stature, even how he look a little bit, is like Tyson. He don't keep the hair, but he's quiet. They only opened the bottom half of the O2. Fact, right? Lock dog. Mike Tyson's nickname, a lot of people don't remember, was Kid Dynamite. You know what I'm saying? So, but the promoters don't forget this shit because they constantly recycling, do the shit over and over. They know that shit. Three minutes behind? What you mean, Preston? No, it's not. Oh, no. Nobody's you. It's, it's Mike Tyson's nickname. He's built like Mike. He looked just like Mike in a, a taller version of Mike Tyson, Joe. And that's all I was seeing. I'm like, damn, they call him Daniel Dynamite Dubois. That was Mike Tyson's nick. He's wearing all black. Black trunks, black shoes. Just come in the ring. He came in the ring just straight like Mike. His demeanor's like a Tyson. You know what I mean? And Tyson, a lot of people don't know, Tyson didn't like a lot of the cameras. Tyson didn't like the cameras and all of that shit. He didn't like that. But with Daniel DeBall, it's not going to become a Tyson because Daniel DeBall has a better family structure and stronghold supporting him. And, of course, his father there. So his, you know, I, we don't see it exactly the same, of course, path. But um, the marketing is what I'm talking about. Fights more like Lennox? Who? Daniel DeBall? Daniel DeBall don't fight like no fucking Lennox. See, you say Daniel DeBall fight like Lennox? Come on, Slim. What are you watching? It was 10,000 at the O2? My bad, Tommaso. Have you seen Khan beat Billy Dibb by a fourth round TKO and win the WBC international title and call out Pacquiao? <laughs> no, I did not, Tomasco Mark, but that is comical. That is fucking comical. So it was on, it was only ever going to be 10,000 tickets allocated. But okay, if they was going to do that, why in the fuck they put them shits all closest to the ring? Why are they selling nosebleed tickets? If there was only 10,000 tickets allocated, that means, again, I don't know who the fuck. Look, man. Look, man. I, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. All of you can do this. It's not just me talking about all of y'all got this common sense, okay? It's about perception. If you only going to allocate 10,000 fucking tickets, put all those 10,000 people directly from the bottom, make it from the bottom up. Not work the shit, have motherfuckers still in the nosebleed seats and shit. Work that 10,000 all closest to the fucking ring to give the impression that it's a packed out arena. Do you darken out the, high, the upper levels? You black out the upper levels, Keep all the spotlight on where the crowd is, which is near 
The, all of them, all of them compacted towards the ring. And then you also get the effect of the crowd, the acoustics, everything. Because as you put people closer together, that would enhance, you know what I mean, the volume of the crowd. Whoever is pushing, what, I don't even know what the name is, Frank Warren, I mean, I don't even, yeah, get, Daniel Gorman is only 23. It's only two years separating them, bro. Your language. Christina Baco, what you mean? You know? But, um, yeah, condense them. Bring the crowd down right there around the arena. Boom. Or the ring, I mean. Condense and bring them all down to the ring. Okay? And then have the cameras least selling it as if it's a packed camera angled everywhere, only showing the crowd. Not a whole bunch of empty seats, how it looked like on the ESPN.com. And that's ESPN's fault doing that shit. Come on, man. Come on, man. People got to have some damn sense. Yeah, Amir Khan is... You know what? But that's what he got to do when he know that he can't take a punch. This is so unfortunate. Somebody with... Amir Khan was beating Canelo Alvarez. He beat Canelo... He made... Amir Khan was making Canelo Alvarez... Go watch that fight. He was making Canelo look foolish. Canelo was hitting air. He was tagging Canelo like hell. But to have such a weak chin and one punch, and I don't even think it has to be the most devastating, powerful puncher. Just one punch. His reactive mind go, and he ready to quit. And that's a damn shame. Yeah, he get caught... Exactly, Arsenal. He get caught once and he's gone. But he was schooling Canelo. You know what I'm saying? Canelo lost every goddamn round in that fight. Till he got knocked out. Until he knocked Khan out. Or should I say Khan. Amir Khan won every round of that fight. Till. Bah, body bag. He won every fucking round. Till body bag. Damn. And I feel bad for Amir Khan almost. I feel sad for the brother. I mean, because that's got to be like, man, genetics, man. Fucking genetics. You know what I mean? Next week in Matchroom, at Matchroom card at the same arena. Let's see if it sell. Who's um, next weekend? Who, who Matchroom got? Fighting at the car next weekend. Yeah, Eddie Hearn is smart. Eddie Hearn, he's on, he, he's going to pay attention to all those details. You know what I mean? Fish eyes, old fish eyes. <laughs> Y'all fucked up. <laughs> old fish eyes. <laughs> that shit just now sinking in. That shit is just now sinking in. Oh, <laughs> old fish eyes, they've been in the game too, <laughs> too fucking long, but he ain't paying attention to those details. But he's such a veteran, you will think he's not missing any of that shit. Oh, White and Revis? Oh. Dylan White? Yeah, Dylan White's a bigger name than Dubois and Gorman. Yeah, Dylan White, he became a big name when he fought, when he became a body bag against Joshua. He became a big name then. Him losing to Joshua boosted his career. Let me ask you a question. Did Dylan White... Go, was Dylan White go pay-per-view? And I don't know this for sure, but I'm asking you. Did Dylan White go pay-per-view before Joshua? Was Dylan White first pay-per-view fight before Joshua or after Joshua? Let me ask you that question. Was Dylan White's first pay-per-view before Joshua or after Joshua? There you go. Blue Sky, was it after? Is that 100% fact? So even losing to a mega, losing to a superstar, boost your fucking status. Okay? You know what I mean? So we can say White was, I mean, you know, this and that. Come on, y'all. Y'all not only deal with logic. I could take, that's why, I, you know what? That's why motherfuckers like BFTB, I, purposely, honestly, I'm not tooting my own horn, but I, I, 
You look at somebody who was doing dealing with debate class coming up. I was debater, you know what I mean? Debate class, corporate law, whole bunch of things. I learned how to debate growing up. So I'm always going to be able to pull out a question, whatever that would, you know, counter or make it look, added something from an alternate perspective, make you think like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. But first of all, okay, let me shout out the bum ass. Now I'm shouting them out. But you know what? I want to say this. I'm only going to say this for a hot one minute. You got too many motherfuckers out here in YouTube. You can tell who has true acumen to do something like this on YouTube versus those who don't have a natural good acumen or a natural innate intelligence to do something like this. Okay? Uh, fuck you, BFTB. Because you got this shit talking about the top 10 greatest ducks or top 10 greatest duckers. And all you did is steal it from Bruce fucking Vane. From Duck Chronicles. Okay? John Cable, what's up? Fuck you. Pardon my French again. But shame. Shame on you non-creative, lacking talent, YouTube creators that watch other people videos and you need to piggyback off their intellectual property. Okay? Come up with something original for yourself. Okay? You got the top 10 greatest duckers. BFTB, best fight, the best, whatever, the band with the LDBC. All right. BFTB, you got the greatest duckers, top 10, whatever this new thing you're coming up. You're riding the coattails of Bruce fucking Vane, the Duck Chronicles. Okay? That's what you're doing. And DuckTales, or whatever Bruce fucking Vane. Okay? Make your own shit. Create your own original content. All right? I got, I can show you examples of mine. So I had the he Heavyweight Mockery, Volume 1 and Volume 2, Volume 3. I got plenty of little quick mini series that I can create. I can keep going on. But I make a few three, don't want them to get weird out a little bit. Then I reiterate and bring them back when it's time when I want you to recharge after I done stepped in a pothole because my mouth got me in trouble. So I step back, okay, let shit die, die down. Oasis, organize, analyze, study, improve my strategy, and come back new and improved. You Bamas who don't have that natural acumen or natural intelligence and just doing the shit because you, the LDBC to lured you in with money going in the super chat and you ain't really supposed to be doing no shit like this. You're wasting your time. you just wasting your fucking time. Even though I would say BFTB is a smart dude. BFTB is a smart dude. But you are a dick rider. Stop riding, dick riding Bruce fucking Vane in the sense of taking his ideas and create your own. And that's all I'm going to say. Now let's go back to the title. Okay. Um, 85% of YouTube channels is unoriginal. 85% of YouTube channels is unoriginal. You know what I mean? They can't. They don't have a creative thinking thought process. It's not really their natural acumen. They should be somewhere, an engineer, a scientist, who knows, a, a fucking chemist, a fucking foreman, or whatever. You know what I mean? So, but, you know what I mean? Come on, man. Come on. People need to have, you know, I, I ain't toot my own horn, but I got a natural acumen for this. Big time. But, you know, and, um, all great artists are inspired by other great artists. Every great artist has been inspired by another great artist. You know, we all come and looking up something like, damn, and that person inspired us to want to do this shit. But what make you an artist is they may inspire you to want to take that path, but they did not inspire you. They shouldn't inspire you to want to be like them or copy them. You should be able to be yourself and be original, okay? And come with your own intellectual property and bring a new idea, a new fucking way of doing something so the shit can keep building and progressing and pushing forward. And you, somebody come behind you, come up on you, say, oh, I like that. But they want to do it, something, add more creativity. You know what I mean? Push it forward. Push the art form, the industry, whatever forward. You know what I'm saying? They only do that if you're being original. And you can only do that if your natural, innate intelligence and acumen is in that area as well. You know what I mean? Because all true artists aren't no kinko copies. No true artists want to be 
want to be saying, oh, you remind me of this, you remind me of that. If any anybody, any of y'all who do music, if any of y'all do anything artistry who's watching this right now, somebody tell you, oh, man, you remind me of such and such. You'll be like, uh, you'll probably say, oh, well, thanks. But in your mind, you're like, no, I don't. You, that's, a, it, that's an insult to you. It's an insult. You know what I'm saying? It's just what it is. Right. Well, I hate, yeah, or copy way of thinking. Or you just, somebody, okay, they set the blueprint and you follow that blueprint dot for dot for dot instead of doing shit your own way. Or adding some originality, your own individualism and originality to something. Yeah, almost all. Yeah. A lot of people. But they're creating that. TV does that to us. TV and music does that to people. Media. The me diaspora does that to people. Media. Slash it. Compound word. Me diaspora. It does that to people. So, you know. But back to boxing. But Gorman. Um, so who thinks Gorman will take the path or will follow or will become or who thinks Gorman is not yet on the crest of becoming a journeyman. But I thought putting him against Big Joe Joyce, whoever said that earlier, you made a good ass fucking point. Dubois got a chin though. Hey, said it was impressive that he carries his power to later rounds. Huh? He's 21 fucking years old. He's 21 years old. He better carry his power to career. He's 21 years old. That motherfucker better carry his weight to later rounds. He's 21 years old. Oh, Christina Bacco, yeah. I better stop cursing. Yeah, I need to do that. Ooh, stack card white versus Reasons. Chisora versus Spilka. Prize versus Allen. Hey, they gonna sell that out. Hey, nobody putting better cards together than Matchroom. The narrative that Khan's team is pushing is that the Crawford fight was the first time he was outboxed all of the other losses, they blame him. They blame on him fighting bigger fighters. Well, yeah. Well, that's Khan's, well, the, his handlers are saying that. Hold up. Myron, the narrative for Khan's team, his te well, isn't that his team's goddamn fault for putting him against fighters bigger than him? Duh. Whose fault is that then? Khan's team or our fault? <laughs> that's the stupid ass excuse. That's a weak ass excuse. Just reverse it. Just reverse it. That's why I kill about anybody who debate me. Anybody. I would destroy them. Say that again. Look at what you just said, Mark. Look what you just said. Um, Tomasco, Tomasco, Mark. Look what you said. Myra, the narrative that Khan's team, team, operative word, team is pushing is that the Crawford fight was, was the first time he was outboxed. All the other losses they blame on him fighting bigger fighters. Well, was it his team that put him against bigger fighters? <laughs> Dumbasses. I could take that and throw that right back at him. Yeah, he looks scared. Look, that's why I would crush anybody to debate. Because I pay attention to what is said. To to a T. And the only two motherfuckers I know of that are just as good as me at that is Bruce fucking Vane, Kurt Duvall, Kurt Duvall counterpunch. Those are the only motherfuckers I know that is on my level with that shit. I think I'm a little nudge in my way different than theirs though. I'm not going to say better. But I'm going to say a little bit different. But Bruce fucking Vane Pants, his attention to detail is magnificent. I'm not, I don't know who's better between me and him. He's my boy. I'm not trying to be better. But I see, when I see good content, when you see good content, it should push you to make better content. A good YouTuber, a dynamic YouTuber, pushes, try to push other YouTubers to make better quality content. 
A good artist push other good artists. A true artist will push other artists to make better content. That is if they are a true artist or entertainer. An entertainer is just going to piggyback on what that true artist did and copy his ass. But a true artist versus another true artist, they are pushing each other up. Because like, God damn, that was some sharp ass shit. Okay, let me sharpen my motherfucking blade. And that's how I look at Bruce fucking Bane. Okay? Or Kurt DeVille. One thing about Kurt DeVille, what I noticed on Kurt DeVille, shout out Andrew Tucker's World, and shout out the other channel, IBFP, or whatever, International Boom. Kurt DeVille counter punches fast as fuck. <laughs> Kurt DeVille, that motherfucker's quick on the draw. That motherfucker, and he's quick on the draw, but still having great detail on how he hits some shit. Same with motherfucking DT3. Didn't mean to leave him out. He's equal on that level too. Or as far as analytical ability. But back to Gorman and Frank Warren Fish Eyes. <laughs> fish Eyes. Oh my God. DT3 Boo Man is dope as hell as that with analytical, an analytical ability. You know what I'm saying? But I would go at BFTB if he felt he gave BFTB some props after the debate, said he knows his shit. I ain't gonna give BFTB anything, even though he ain't getting shit, but all his likes is coming off going live for three fucking hours. I would still crush him, any fucking format. But is Gorman gonna become, is Gorman gonna become, remain perhaps a prospect? Has the law throw his prospect abilities out of there? Will he still have the chance to become a contender and a, maybe a champion? Or is he gonna become a journeyman? And if somebody said earlier, if Fish Eyes is already willing to put Gorman in with Joe Joyce, then he sees Joe Joyce as a bigger, maybe a better. Has to, he sees Joe Joyce as having the potential to make him more money than he sees Nathan Gorman. That, that's obvious. Nathan a la Sunday Gorman. John Starr, how you doing, sir? Motherfuckers talking about Amir Khan's narrative. Amir Khan there said, well, he fought bigger fighters. The only time he got outboxed was versus. Get the fuck out of here. Y'all put him against the biggest fighters. You stupid motherfuckers. Duh. Duh. That shit is so obvious to me, though. Like, you, the team says it was only lost because it was bigger fighters. Then why the fuck you put him in with the bigger fighters? He may still be able to undefeat it. Dumbasses. But, um, yeah, hit the like button, beautiful spirits. Duvall, boy, hey, you know what? Daniel Duvall, he looked controlled. That 21-year-old looked very controlled, man. And Gorman was hitting Daniel Duvall or commenting talking about, are you serious? You think you're faster than me? Yeah, in that fight, Daniel Duvall looked just as fast as you, Nathan Gorman. And he ain't fat. Okay, y'all? You still view Gorman as a prospect. But I agree, it's obvious they're going to use Gorman as a stepping... Yes, that's what I mean. There you go. That's, a, that's all I'm saying. That's all pretty much a journeyman or a gatekeeper is. It's pretty obvious. And why is he a great prospect? And I said it last night in the live. Look, man. Look, man, we can't, black people, black, black men, black fighters or white fighters can't expect, we can't expect to be able to do what those Mexican fighters can do with that gut, okay? If you're a black fighter or a white fighter, we need to be in shape. We need to look the part, okay? Only a Mexican can get away with that shit that Andy Ruiz can get away with, Okay? That tortillas and refried beans is built in that motherfucker's DNA. He can fight in that shape. Andy Ruiz Jr. can knock a lot of motherfuckers out and fight with his shape. Not black men or white men, though. Okay? And I'm dead serious. <laughs> that was Foreman. That's Foreman. Foreman was already a champion. Okay? 
Foreman was already a freaking champion. He already had a record. His record didn't go away. He just came back and built on what he already built. Okay? And he did it with the hardest puncher ever. <laughs> Butter Bink and Bank for yeah, three fucking rounds. <laughs> he ain't gonna sell the world. Butter Bing was a fucking that's true. Lost one. Look, man. Black fighters, black us, look. Black, white, we can't get away with being fat and fighting think we're going to be competitive, okay? Those Mexicans have built generations and hundreds of years of tortilla and refried beans in their motherfucking DNA. They can fat, they can fight fat like that. They can bust your motherfucking ass with that gut, okay? Watch those motherfuckers on soccer. You see chubby motherfuckers on soccer teams, okay? Still... Dribble like fuck with that ball. Running like shit. Okay? You don't see no fat fight. You don't see no fat soccer football players. Fat black or fat white football players. You don't see no fat white or fat black football players. But you see some chubby ass Mexicans or Brazilians playing some football. Still fast as fuck on their feet. Dribble their motherfucking ass off. Okay? That shit is in their DNA. They can get that shit. Okay? They built. That shit is tortilla tough. That gut is tortilla tough, motherfuckers. Okay? They they done over hundreds and hundreds of years. They don't know how to build and run with that shit. That does not work for black and white fighters. You cannot sell that shit with black and white fighters. You can sell that shit in Mexico. Okay? Y'all need to understand that shit. So, Nathan Gorman... That I say all that is like Nathan Gorman it, well, never gonna be no fucking prop, no champion, no cash cow. That motherfucker was a that tubby tubby don't work. That tubby tubby work with a Mexican. South of the border motherfuckers. It does not work. Okay? That tortilla tough shit does not work with black or white people. We gotta look ripped. We gotta look in shape. And y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay? So I'm going I'm to cut the chase. Nathan Gorman was never looked at to be a prospect by, Frank, by fish eyes. He was looked to be fish food, a stepping stone. He was going to be fish food for the sharks. That was always Nathan Gorman's plan. You see him standing? The motherfucker's knock needed. The motherfucker's knock needed and shit. You can't be knock needed and be no heavyweight champion of the world. Even though Tyson Fury is knock knee. But that's why uh, he got a lot of fans. But it's gonna be hard to sell. It's, it's gonna be hard to sell a fat knock needed fighter. I'm telling you. It, it just don't work. Like I said to y'all before. <laughs> Hit the like button. Like I've said to you before. Okay? It's just it's entertainment. The champion guy looked like a guy. A cool guy, all the guys want to be like, and the champion need to look like a, a guy all the girls want to be with. This is how showbiz works. This is how endorsement money is pushed. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is, baby. <laughs> Who didn't throw a single jab, Blue Sky? That motherfucker's tortilla tough. <laughs> I, see, I came with that up on the fly. But I thought that shit was pretty cool. Ain't no Ruiz is tortilla tough. That's all with those Mexicans. That shit do not work for black or white men. Okay? Or any or Asian men. Well, no, that shit make it work for Asian men. Because they got sumo wrestlers and shit. But we know what we talking about. That shit ain't working for nobody else but those motherfuckers south of the border. It doesn't sell. It never has. Unless they're to be a butt of jokes. Unless they're the butt of jokes. I pay attention to details. Okay? Pay attention to detail. My acumen, you pay attention to detail. We know how to we know how this shit go. If you're my age, you've seen different cycles happen two, three, four, five, six, ten times over five to ten year periods over your life, bruh. In different, it's the same shit in different industries. Okay, that is the fucking format. You know what I mean? 
Fat, fat black, fat white don't sell. Not in sports. We need to be badass and sexy. We need to be badass or sexy. Badass, good looking. You know what I mean? You don't have to have the greatest personality all the time. Daniel DuBois is so young. Yeah, Brock said how we now. Daniel DuBois is so young where he's going to develop, and that's his confidence. His shyness is a little bit. He talks the confidence, but it's based off what people are telling him. It's not he. It's not 100% sold. As he gets up, about 25, 26, his personality will become the show. His comfortability around the camera and everything will become the show. And then they can sculpt. They can sculpt a venue, sculpt a personality a little bit. They can sculpt a, you know what I mean, selling. They'll be able to more strategically know where to place him to sell, but they can still, he can still perhaps make millions, tens and twenties of millions of dollars in endorsement if he is to make it that far. He's still early. But you can go, you can gear that with Daniel Dubois. You know what I'm saying? You can, he's still very young. When he hit 25, then you see, okay, his, his personality will become more, you know what I mean, show more. A blank slate. Yeah, he's still early. He's still early. Wow. Yeah, I like to see that too. I like to see all of that. Gerald Miller about to become fucking fish food for the sharks. He's done. He's about to become fish food. But he's still undefeated, right? We'll see. I think he's about to be he's about to be made the fish food. That was about to be shown until he failed all those goddamn tests. Magic prison I seen boxing how he now. Hmm. Yeah. Um Prince well shit. Prince Nassim was fighting like a, a lightweight Roy Jones. He was a lightweight British. Um, is he Indian, Pakistani, whatever he is, Roy Jones. He was or like um an Emmanuel Burton, drunken style. Just more but Prince Nassim, you know why I don't like Prince Nassim? Prince Nassim got his ass whooped, his pride hurt, and he left the sport. That's why I really never fuck with Prince Nassim. That's why we don't talk about him like that out here. Okay? As soon as you come here, you get a you get you he beat Kevin Kelly. Think he the shit. Ring magazine, all of that. Okay? An aging Kevin Kelly. But he got dropped in that fight. Okay? He he beat Kevin Kelly. Then come in, a few more fights here. He lose. I think within his third fight here in America, I'm not 100% sure. I need to go back and do some research. But he built this record over there, came over here, did good for a minute. As soon as he get a loss, which was within like three or four fights of his American debut and all that, I'm not 100% sure. He only had one or two more fights after that. Then he quit and lose. Come on, man. You can't do that. You can't do that. That's why That's why Lennox Lewis does have the respect he, he gets. He took his L's. He came back and kept on banging. You know what I'm saying? He didn't quit. These motherfuckers is building up their resumes. They come to America, get a great showing. He was good for Hollywood. He was good for the sell the crowd. Barrera got in that motherfucking ass. And all of a sudden, he lost his heart. And so that is why sometimes a lot of us look at or don't look at Prince Nassim or don't rank him that high. Because you came here. How, how old was Prince Nassim when he retired? And how many fights was he in in America before he retired? Yeah, he's the size of a fucking house. But 
He didn't fight too many fights. After he took that first loss, after he was embarrassed by Barrera, he only fought one or two more times, right? And then he retired. Because it's, oh, one more time, his pride was hurt. That's not good. That's not cool, man. He only going to be looked at as a, as a legend over there in the UK. He won't be looked at as a legend over here because he didn't fight enough here to build, to get the crowd of America behind him. So that's why us over here is never going to look at him like he only had like four or five fights here. Yeah. Well, I mean, they had fall short, but he beat Kevin Kelly, and that was a, a good win. Don't get it twisted. Kevin Kelly was a great win, but he shouldn't have, like, want to freaking quit the sport after he got embarrassed by Barrera. His pride got hurt. You know what I mean? It didn't know. He should have went back to the tool, ch tool shed, re-geared the shit, come back, and bang. You know what I'm saying? But he... He, we, that's what happens when you do all that funny, silly ass shit and you get your ass whipped, you feel like a fucking fool. <laughs> he felt like a fool. And so, but I fuck with, I ain't gonna lie, I fuck with Nassim, huh, man? <laughs> I like Prince Nassim, but I understood that most of the American fans or we like him, but he ain't like in our minds. It's like, it's unfortunate the same for Kawasaki. We look at him like that. But they have the fucking, you know what I think it is with the UK fighters? No bullshit. Well, a lot of UK fighters, if you're going to build your career, and this is constructive criticism, something to help build your career, not just in the UK, but build it in America as well as in the UK at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you got the money behind you, fight two fights in the UK, or get like 10 fights in the UK, don't wait too long before you come to America to fight and fight American competition. And have a team behind you, have American and UK trainers at the same time build your team. Yeah, I said that shit on here for. Well, yeah, but he, you know what I mean? Have, have your team, UK and American. And your resume should be built up of, because since the UK is so small with 66 million people, have your resume built off of UK and American fighters on the way up. So you know what to expect on either side. If you're grooming a young champion from the UK, I'm speaking specifically for the UK fighter. If you want to build up a young UK champion that's going to be able to bank either side, I think he has to, early on in his career, has to be, may perhaps start in America, and then you take him over to the UK to build in the UK, or vice versa. Well, well, if you build him up in the UK, like first five, ten fights, in his first ten fights should have at least three American fighters. Let's say that. And it shouldn't be like, you just, him, you bringing American fighters over there. I mean, you should go in America, should be fighting. You know what I'm saying? You should, against good, tough competition at your level, wherever you're at. And then that's how you build them. But I don't think you should build up UK, 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 and you have 25, 30 fights in, and then you come switch over. Or 25 fights in, and then try to switch over and fight American. I think it's too late. I think you need to switch over early as possible. Or get in, go back and forth, fighting the UK, American, fighting America, fighting the UK. Have maybe two fights in America, two fights in the UK. And you keep going back and forth. And I think that's how, you know, you'll build a UK fighter up that is um, the skill level and what's expected would be on par to where he needs to be at. And he can have both markets too at the same time. But you shouldn't just, you know... Some people could say that's you want to build up over here and then go over there, but times is changing, and the internet has, um, the internet has made the world smaller, and what who we know about, you know what I'm saying? So I think you can 
when they used to say you have to build up home front first and then you go overseas, I don't think that is definitely the roadmap or the format you have to do in this day and age. If it's marketable, if you do it right and use social media, how you need to use it. Yeah, you have to be, you have to be at the very top. No, I don't think so. I really don't think it is. I honestly, true, true and be told, I don't think it's hard for him to be there if he was already there early on in his stage of his career. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is his team, they should already have a house somewhere in America. So, okay, look, we're going to fight these next three fights here in the UK. And guess what? These three fights, we're going to fight in America. The next three fights here going to be in America, build you up. Not super tough competition, but get your name, build you up. You're already going to be somebody who's getting to know the circuit. You're still going to be working, training, sparring with young fighters, American fighters. So even if the American fighters, you know what I mean, even you from the UK, but you fought and spent a lot of time with American fighters, there's going to be some affinity that's being built. There's going to be some affinity, affinity you're going to build with those fighters. So even though the fighter's going to be like, yeah, he's from the UK, but I rock with him. That's my dude. Or they'll be like, yeah, he's from America. You know what I'm saying? But he spent a lot of time here in the UK with us. And I got a friendship and a partnership with that dude. I sleep in the same house with that dude. I done spar with that dude. I done party with that dude. That dude, I done ate at that dude's house. He done ate at my house. I rock with him. And if you get a pro the top prospects rocking for a UK, and the top American prospects rocking for, um, or UK rocking for American, uh, American rocker for a UK because those whoever those guys were, they you know spent time over here, spent time over there. They didn't just keep their time on one specific side. Nah, he's gonna be able to go both ways without a doubt. Especially if he got that charisma, he's a likable uh, personality, and he good peoples, and he's sincere and he's real. You know what I mean? He's not a fake motherfucker, but he's real with both sides, and he treat them both the same. He can do it. And and because and, when you say that, okay, and um, and of course, yes, us Americans could be in a bubble because we three we think we're the media capital of the world and we think everything gonna revolve around us. If we see motherfucker, we that motherfucker who come from across overseas, whatever, going to get a pass. If we see him going through the same grind and grit as um as we do, or right beside us every day. We gonna fuck, love and respect that dude. You know what I mean? It's gonna be a bond regardless. Affinity is gonna build between that cast because he's fucking going up the ranks with you. He's right with you. He's like, man, I'm here for a year. You know what I mean? Or oh, I'm here for six months. I mean, he gonna have American friends. He's gonna build up with them. That's Mayweather's gym. That's a lot of motherfuckers' gym. They got different motherfuckers all the world, from all over the world in there. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? So that's how it's got to be done. You know what I mean? For a UK fighter, I'm thinking. You know what I mean? Or anybody who comes to America. But it could be done without a motherfucking doubt. You know what I mean? Because a lot of us rock with Prince Nassim. We supported Prince Nassim. Prince Nassim got major support. We fucked with him. We didn't fuck with him after he lost and ran. You understand? What I'm saying is we, he, and me, they don't talk to us. What are you talking about? It could be like that. You just got to you gotta build kids together. Okay, look. Prime example. You have fucking, you put a white baby, black baby, Asian baby, fucking, let, Mexican baby. Or if you put a white Asian, a white baby, I hate to say that, put a European baby, white European baby, you put a South American brown baby, you put a black African baby, you put an Asian yellow baby, you put them all on the floor by themselves, those motherfuckers is going to fucking play. They ain't just going to play. They don't know none of that shit. The racism, or should I say not racism, but the prejudice is taught to them 
through the society surroundings around them, the TV, peers, dumb fucks around them. Those babies are just going to fucking play. So prejudice, racism is a learned behavior. Okay? I'm not going to say racism. I'm going to say prejudice. Prejudice is a learned behavior. Racism is a system. But prejudice is a learned behavior. Those babies, they all happen. My best friend growing up, one of my best friends growing up, Chase is a white kid. I chipped my goddamn tooth on his fence. Okay, here. That tooth right there, that was on the motherfucker's fence. I hit his ass with an egg. Blah! We fucking nine, eight, nine years old. Bust his ass with an egg. Bow. He's about to get another egg. I said, oh shit. Turn around. Boop. Hit the fucking fence. Chip my fucking tooth. Because I was about to run because I didn't want to hit, get hit with an egg back. And I, and I was trying to push the fence, but I was closer to, closer to the fence than I realized. And I was turning around to open the fence and I was already at the fence. Boom. Chip my fucking tooth. At nine years old. But I was a white kid. We ate nine. We ain't give a fuck. We playing like shit. I'm in this basement here in my crib. We in. Come on, man. So, nah, it, it can be. It's just that that kid has to come to their environment and come and do spend some time with them and come up with them. You feel me? He got to go through some struggle with them. He got to go through some pain. You know what I mean? Some, some bullshit with the American fighters. And the American fighters going to, he said, man, he from UK, but shit, he with us. He part of the club. You know what I mean? He been here with us in and out. He'll leave, he come back, he go home to his peoples, do a couple of fights, he go home to his family, which is in the UK, do a couple of fights, he come back with his peoples. You know what I'm saying? Or come back over here with us. You know what I mean? He be here for us. Then after a while, he need to go back home, be with his family. Boom, boom. He have some fights there. Then he come back, build, fuck with us. Yeah, he'll get support like that. You know what I mean? It could be done. It's nothing's impossible. But, oh well. Yellow baby, oriental, oriental. You know what I mean? I didn't create it. That was something that was, you know, they passed. Red baby, I should say red baby too for the others. But black baby, white baby, yellow baby, red baby. <laughs> That's pretty much what the earth is about. <laughs> oh, and brown, what must I say? Black baby, brown baby, brown baby. Yeah, black baby, brown baby. Red baby, yellow baby, white baby. Five phenotypes. I ain't make it up, but this shit is in books. <laughs> I didn't make it up. I'm just reading shit that I read. That's just some shit I came up, I read. That I read in a couple of books. So, I don't know. But yeah, man. Hey, I'm out of here, beautiful spirits. Hit the like button as you leave the building. Okay? I said I was going to be 30 minutes. And I went on for double the time. Ain't that something? I fucks with y'all. It was still job early. But y'all, it's past. I know it's for shit. It's 1 o'clock for y'all there. Something like that. Y'all go ahead, man. Get ready for your week. Have a wonderful week, brothers. Hit the like button. Hit the like button on your way out if you haven't. No doubt, John Cable. And, uh, peace out. I still got some sunlight here. I'm going to get out there and enjoy that shit. Tech Nick, what's up? Let me shout out everybody who I miss. AK Super Dope, I saw you, bro. My bad. One love, man. My bad. Lost one, what's up? John Star. Shout you out, sir. Who else? Who I miss? My fault. I started talking. And I went to Windbag, Windbag Magnus. My apologies. Windbag Magnus. That was it, man. Time flies with you, man. One love, champs. Be easy, baby. All right? Nathan Gorman, the makings of a journeyman. I'm out.